Hey guys, welcome back to Eileen's World. In this video, I'll take you guys with me to the beautiful, cold, and green city of Portland. If you're nosy and you want to find out how I spent almost five days in the city, then make sure you just keep on watching. My best friend and I went to Portland at the end of February and boy was it cold. We landed in Portland International Airport and took a lift into downtown Portland. It was a 15 minute car ride into the downtown, so just short enough for me to not get car sick. We stayed at the Royal Sinesta and it was such a cute and quirky hotel. The room was perfect for the both of us. We had no issues with the noise from the street or with the room itself. It was only a couple minutes walk to Pioneer Courthouse Square and tons of food, bars, and cafes around. I really enjoyed staying downtown because of its location to every place I wanted to go to. I was able to walk around the entire city and only used an Uber to go to and from the airport. Everything, aside from the tours that we took, was less than a 30 minute walk away. We made it to Portland. It's cold. It's nippy. It's nippy. So it's about two o'clock in the afternoon now and we're gonna go get some coffee to refresh, even though it was about an hour and a half flight from California. We headed over to Cafe Umbria, which is a Seattle-based coffee roaster. We ordered the Honey Oat Latte and the Lavender Latte. Each coffee comes with a little piece of dark chocolate. The coffees were so delicious and I really loved the vibe of the cafe. After coffee, we strolled around downtown. If you didn't know, Portland does not have any sales tax, so go crazy. From high street to luxury, you can have it all and find it in downtown Portland. We worked up an appetite window shopping, so we headed over to the Pearl District for some dinner. Portland is known for their donuts, coffee, and microbreweries. So we went to Von Ebert Brewery, which is a local craft brewery with two locations in Portland. How many times can I say brewery? This location in the Pearl neighborhood carries a large selection of IPAs and German-inspired lagers. Okay, so I got a pale ale, also known as the Known Presence, and Tao got a IPA. Wave Decay. It's called Wave Decay. These names are very intense. <laughs> So here I got the fried chicken sando and you have an option of uh, three different sauces and I got the Nashville hot sauce with the hot slaw and tater tots and ranch. So this is the West Coast poutine. It has chicken strips, fries, shredded Tillamook cheddar, buttermilk ranch and chives, oh my god. If you're more of a cocktail girl like me, then they do have a small menu of cocktails as well. And for the next round, I got a passion fruit shimmer margarita. I'm no beer connoisseur or a beer snob, but I can say the beer that I had was good and the pub food was delicious and indulgent. The staff was friendly and I loved how there was so much space and seating for everyone. It's freezing here. It's so cold. We headed over to Honey Milk in the Knob Hill neighborhood for brunch. I picked this place because I really like the concept of a sweet and savory set price brunch. It was quite busy for a Friday morning and they do not take reservations. Once you get inside, you grab a menu, order at the front counter, and then they give you a number and wait to be seated. For $24, you can get a drink, one savory dish, and one sweet dish. And if you want a mimosa, that's gonna be a couple dollars extra. I ordered the Monte Cristo nut, which had a cornflake French toast fritter with manchego fondue, green pepper marmalade, smoky ham and thyme, and the carrot cake forever, which had cream cheese pudding, candy carrot butter, carrot glaze, and pecan toffee. 
We also got the Everything Beignet Benedict, which had avocado, poached egg, shallot, hazelnut pesto, and creme fraiche hollandaise, and the sourdough pancake donut with blueberry stuffed glazed topped yogurt, key lime curd ice cream, and toasted coconut. The portions are not huge, but definitely enough for two people to share and feel satisfied. It's a super cool concept, and the dishes are a twist on a classic brunch dish. Our next stop after brunch was the Portland International Rose Garden. It was about a 20 minute walk from Honey Milk. And did you know that Portland is the city of roses? So here we are at the International Rose Garden. And I'm no botanist or green thumb, but I guess there's a period of time in the year when they need to regrow, right? So we just left the International Rose Garden, which I'm pretty sure that when they're in bloom, it's beautiful, right, Tao? <laughs> With so many species here. Um, but the park has a nice little, you can do a little nice little walk. But now we're gonna head over to the Japanese Tea Garden. And I hope there are more plants in bloom over there. We'll, we'll see. Cherry blossom season, perhaps? Located in the same park is the Portland Japanese Garden. It was $18.95 per person to go in. We spent about an hour and a half walking around the garden, which has a waterfall, an art exhibit, a tea house, and an amazing view of Mount Hood. The Japanese garden also has a cafe inside. It was quite busy when we went, but they do take reservations. So if you're planning on going, make sure you reserve a spot ahead of time. And there's also, of course, my favorite part, a really cute gift shop. $18 is a little bit pricey, but if you're into Japanese gardens or want a serene place to hang out for a little bit, then check out this place. We spent the rest of the afternoon exploring the Knob Hill neighborhood of Portland. This neighborhood is known for its trendy shopping, laid back restaurants and cafes. We had a lot of fun exploring the vintage clothing shops and laughing at how much vintage shirts cost these days. Our favorite shop that we stumbled upon was Northwest Union, which had a vari huge variety of vintage teas. We stopped by Kells Brewery, which is an Irish family run brewery on 21st Avenue in Knob Hill. Okay, so we made our way to Kells Brewery, and we feel like we've been transported to Dublin, no? Would you say? Um, I ordered a, a cider. They ran out of that cider, so I got the Magner's Irish Cider, which tastes like apple juice. We have had our fill of fried and heavy food, so we're at the brewery, and we needed to get something fresh and green, so we got, we got the farm salad here, but to compensate, we also got the pretzel with the beer cheese and then the mustard. Beer cheese needs more cheese. Mm -hmm. More beer than cheese, huh? A lot of beer. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed our afternoon at Kale's Brewery. The food was good, the ambiance was relaxing, and the beer was good as well too. Portland is known for their food carts and there are over 200 around the city. For dinner, we decided to keep it casual and headed over to Small Ferris Falafel, which was less than a five minute walk from our hotel. We ordered the lamb gyro for $7, which was probably the most delicious gyro I've ever had, and the shawarma plate, which was $10. This is the best lamb gyro I've ever had, and you know why? It has grilled onions in here. <laughs> Be sure to check for operating hours for the food carts that you want to try as many were closed during our trip. So good morning. We are in day two uh, of our Portland trip. We're headed out to get some breakfast now at Saint-Honoré Boulangerie, 
which is about two blocks from where we're staying. And then we're gonna get picked up in about an hour to go on our uh, tour. So let's get some breakfast. This bakery, or should I say boulangerie, has a mouth-watering selection of sweet and savory pastries, sandwiches, and desserts. All right, so Tao ordered the maple bacon croissant, which is like a croissant with a strip of bacon over it and some maple, maple drizzlings. These are puff balls, chouquette. And they come in a big old bag of like a lot. pastries but it's not filled but it's like a sugary crust on the outside this is good mm. and my croque monsieur is done fresh out of the toaster or the oven for the price and quality i would highly recommend visiting this boulangerie in portland we booked our half-day Gorge Waterfalls tour with Infinite Oregon Tours for $69 a person. We were picked up from our hotel at 10.30 and greeted by our tour guide and owner of the tour company, TJ. It took about 30 minutes to get to our first point of interest, so TJ entertained us with a lot of fun facts about the city and himself. You guys excited? Yes! And how many people is this your first time in Oregon or your first time to at least the Columbia River Gorge? First time. Timer. Yeah, an honor and a fruit bars and water were offered on the van, which was a nice touch, and I actually forgot how delicious fruit bars could be. Our first stop was at the Portland Women Forum State Scenic Point. It was so windy, I'm surprised we didn't get blown away. <laughs> we might get blown away here. So according to TJ, our tour guy, he, he said we came at a really good time because there's ice. And there's a beautiful waterfall. And be careful, it's very slippery. are walking uphill luckily there's no black ice on the on this pathway say hi we're at Wakina Falls which means I didn't listen oh well, here, well, look it up. She proposed to me here. She asked me to be her best friend forever. Forever. <laughs> so this is a pro tip. This is a great proposing spot. Whether you want to ask somebody for their hand in marriage or to be a best friend for life. So we had to get dropped off at the side of the road because there's just too many cars and the clock is ticking. So we're just gonna walk our way over to the front. There's a little restaurant and lounge here and there's a gift shop. Apparently there's some good fudge in there as well too. So we went over to the little snack bar and I got myself a Rocky Road Fudge for $5. Freshly made here. Okay, we made it back to our hotel room, our tour with uh, Infinite Tour Group. 
I was done. It went over by an hour and a half, so according to our tour guide, it's basically we got a free. Anything after 2.30 was free, was a free tour. Uh, Tao, what would you rate it? Three thumbs up if I had an extra thumb. You did, but you got it surgically removed. Yeah. Um, yeah, five out of five. It was a half day tour. We didn't go to Mount Hood, but we went through the bunch of waterfalls. TJ was, TJ is the owner, <laughs> he's the owner of the tour group, tour company, and he was also our tour guide, he was also the photographer. So if you guys are in Portland, Oregon, then make sure you check out Infinite Oregon Tours. They go to uh, the waterfalls, Mount Hood, Oregon coast, they do private tours. And TJ, oh he's also a really good uh, quiz. Quiz giver, yeah, we won, and our prize uh, were some fig bars. bars, yeah. All right, so we took a little break after our tour to recuperate from the beauty that we witnessed with our eyes, all the waterfalls. So we're gonna head over shopping, and then we're gonna go to dinner after. So come shopping with us. So we are here at Tender Loving Empire. If you want some really cute souvenirs for Portland, check out this spot, it's adorable. They do close early. And while you're in Portland, you gotta check out Powell's Books, the world's largest independent bookstore. For dinner, we headed to Lil Shalom. We passed by this cute restaurant earlier in the day and wanted to check it out for dinner. It's a Mediterranean restaurant featuring hummus, salads, and sandwiches. The restaurant has a limited number of seating on the inside and a patio option as well. You order at the register and they bring the food to you once you're seated. So even though it's like 40 degrees outside and it's raining and we're sitting outdoors, I got a sangria. Oh my goodness, look, there's a little chicken on it. And Tao got this beautiful drink, French cocktail. We definitely overordered. We got the spiced fries for $9, the classic hummus for $13, the lamb shawarma for $15, and the baharat chicken kebab. Even though the restaurant is super cute and the food was beautifully presented, I just thought it was okay. I wasn't a fan of all of the flavors and, and I would actually pass on this restaurant. For coffee and breakfast, we went to The Good Coffee Shop, which is located inside the Woodlark Hotel. They have a standard coffee menu along with some seasonal offerings as well. We ordered the matcha lavender latte for $5.50 and a salted caramel latte for $6. They do carry pastries and have some breakfast burritos. We both really enjoyed the drinks that we got, but we were not impressed with the breakfast burritos. So if you come to Good Coffee, I would actually probably try their pastries and coffee and skip on the breakfast burritos. If you didn't know, Oregon is well known for their Pinot Noir. Willamette Valley, Oregon's largest wine region, is less than an hour away from downtown Portland. We booked our half day tour with Cedar Summit Tours after the first company we booked with didn't have enough reservations to actually hold the tour. After coffee and breakfast, we met our tour guide at 10.30 in Pioneer Square and headed on our way. The tour was $159 per person before tax and tip and included visits to three wineries and tastings at each location. Lunch is not included for the price of this tour, but we did have the option of pre-ordering from the coffee cottage and we picked up lunch and we were able to enjoy it at the second winery.
If you're visiting Portland and you're a fan of wine or you're coming for a girl's trip or a couple's trip, I would recommend taking a day from the city to travel to wine country. I wasn't exactly impressed with this particular tour company, so I would suggest doing your research and booking with another company. For our last dinner in Portland, I was craving pasta, so we went to the first Italian restaurant we passed by, which was Mamma Mia Trattoria in downtown Portland. Cheers. We ordered the Caprese salad for $18, the delicious bolognese to share, which was $23, and to top it all off, the panna cotta for $10. For the food, service, and price, I would give this place a 10 out of 10 and would recommend you going if you're looking for classic, uncomplicated Italian food. For our last morning and breakfast in Portland, we went for some southern breakfast at Screen Door Restaurant. They have two locations in the city, one in the Pearl and one in the East Side. After a week of burgers, beer, pasta, we opted for some lighter options for breakfast. So I ordered the French onion and bacon tart for $15 and Tao got the mixed mushroom scramble, which was also $15. But of course we had to get two glasses of mimosas as well. This restaurant gets very busy, so if you can, make a reservation. We made reservations and came by 10 a.m., but by the time that we left, it was packed. And keep in mind, this was like a, a rainy Monday. And of course, we couldn't leave Oregon without visiting the White Stag sign. Oh, and another thing that we couldn't leave Portland without trying, Stumptown Coffee. Luckily, they had a location in the airport and we got to try some before we left. Uh, all right guys so this is the end of our portland trip thank you so much for watching and i made a new friend his name is raffi the giraffe at forte coffee so uh if you like this video and raffi the giraffe then make sure you subscribe and leave a comment down below if you've been to portland and i'll see you guys in my next video say bye